Welcome to the second of our free webinars uh, where we're giving a taster of some of the content of our UK Lean Summit. My name is Dave Brunt and I manage the activity at the Lean Enterprise Academy and I'm joined by um, by Sharon Visser today um, as our guest and we're going to discuss the topic of Kaizen. Um, just as a reminder, um, the Lean Enterprise Academy is a not-for-profit uh, it was set up by Dan Jones over 20 years ago to help customers become self-reliant on their lean journey. Do take a look at the website. It explains our history, what we're researching, how we work with partner companies and all of our le learning, teaching and coaching and sharing activities. OK, so the summit is our conference uh, that we developed to help people learning and implementing lean thinking. Um, it's a key in-person activity that helps delegates by sharing how lean uh, can be used um, to, uh, to solve the problems of today and tomorrow, whilst enabling participants to build their own network of lean thinkers. Uh, we've got four key themes for the 2023 event, uh, the productivity challenge, supply chain disruption, the environmental crisis that we uh, discussed last week with Neil Trivedi, and lessons learned from COVID-19. The principle of Kaizen runs e through each one of these. Um, there are both keynote plenary sessions and learning sessions, um, which you can tailor to your agenda. And there are about 30 speakers from 15 companies, including uh, the Aramis Group, uh, which is a, a French um, used car retailer, uh, Iberia, the airline people, Securus, uh, a vaccines company, uh, Strategy Deployment, our own National Health Service, uh, Thales, who are a uh, French, uh, Anglo French um, defense group, Technip FMC, which is uh, a global. Um, organization involved in um, exploration for things like oil, gas, um, you know, energy, basically. Uh, Ecobat, uh, which we discussed last week, and of course, Toyota. And we, 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 we organize, we've organized quite a few of these conferences. Um, we're frequently told that they are uh, the best of their kind. Uh, and they they uh, they attract a very wide diverse audience. Uh, I think um, our last event that we did, we had 160 representatives from 22 countries. So, Sharon, um, we've asked you to do two things at the summit. Um, the first thing we asked you to do is a learning session on practical cases for introducing Kaizen, which is today's main thing and then secondly we asked you to do we've asked you to do a plenary um which is really uh the title is almost the same as john shuck's question uh in the lean transformation framework so what basic thinking mindset and assumptions drive lean change so the reasons for doing that were that we that getting everybody involved uh was a key piece of your success at uh, halfway to Ota and Gami in Maun in Botswana, and also it's the same today in your role as a as a coach these days. Can you tell me a little bit about what problems you see regarding getting people involved in making improvements to the work? Um, I think I think one of the first things is that maybe Kaizen isn't fully understood or, or taken to heart in the way it should be. Um, let me go back to what I first knew about Kaizen when I worked for in, in Garmi Toyota that then became halfway. I took over from a dealer principal and he handed his files over to me and he said, these are, are the Toyota programs and here is the Kaizen file. What you have to do is you have to think of some kind of improvement, fill in the form, put it in the file. So when they come and do the inspection, you can show them the file that you've made improvements and, and then you get marked against it. Right. Um, and that's how I understood it. It was just a basic improvement. Are we? So I looked around, I thought, oh, well, the showroom's looking a bit shabby. Let me shift the furniture around. Let me put some more posters up. And, and so it became very surface and visual in pictures I could take to put into the form. Um, and then just get my box ticked. And then I could get paid out at the end of the year that I ticked my boxes and, and done my Kaizen. It was only when you came 
<laughs> right, okay. <laughs> right to be about cars, I'm thinking, oh, so that's what it is. It's about how we respond to a problem. It's what we do about a problem. Um, and the the connection was never made, even though I worked for Toyota, the never, connection was really never made at a dealership level. Maybe in the factory, yeah. in Durban, they'd made that connection and in Toyota itself, possibly in areas. But in the dealerships, it had not really been discussed. It was just a form to fill in, uh, yeah. saying you'd done something a little bit better. It wasn't taking a problem and responding to it the correct way and making an improvement that way. So I think that maybe there's a disconnect and that that is the problem to solve is do people understand first? I think that that is the thing, do people really understand what it means? Yeah, I, I think I think that's it's a very good point, isn't it? Because a lot of people dress lean up as a program in any case they, they say this is a program a, a lean and you hear the words lean pro, we have a lean program so so then what you're actually doing is you're almost asking you're not necessarily asking people to behave like that all the time you're asking them to actually tick a series of boxes in order to accomplish something yeah it's yeah. infinite it's something when you tick the boxes it's done until the next time you get boxes to tick. It's not a continuous circuit that one has to go yeah. through. Yeah, interesting, yeah. Uh, and and the next would be people still believe a problem is bad. And right. that is an emotional issue with all of us. We've been trained problems are bad. The way leadership respond to a problem is shown problems are bad. And the consequences of a problem to the front line have shown that a problem is bad. So, you know, just getting that out the way is another more emotional challenge to deal with. Yeah, yeah. So in both arenas, there's there's these things going on. And then there's, there's the, I call them the 20% that want to hang on to control. And then letting go to staff, to front lines to do things and watching other front line people succeed when you're not succeeding are all part of the emotional side of doing lean. And I think that we, we often don't take that into account. So what that actually is, is a lack of trust on both sides because staff are used to getting into trouble for a problem and leadership are used to sh shouting at someone over a problem or giving some kind of punitive action for a problem, not actually sourcing the root cause and removing it. So it's really a case of getting over those first. You have to get over those first before you can go any further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the, there is that lovely Toyota quote, isn't there? No problems is a problem. Yes, uh, no one believes that one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nobody, no, nobody, nobody believes it until they actually start. Yes, thinking a bit more deeply about it and doing something about it. But, um, but it, it's it's ever so true, isn't it? You know, the it person is. that has no problems has has got the biggest problem of all. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and once you can get over that, we need to try and make the cars and stimulating and creative for everyone by bringing everyone in. And, and and it's only when you get over the emotional side can you get to that place of bringing everyone together. Right. Mm, good. So so you, so you're going to go through some of this at the summit. That's that that's that's really you. You know, we're we're giving people a flavour for today, but you're going to expand on some of this and and um, and get people thinking about how they overcome some of these these issues really. Yes, and and there there's a definite sequence of tactics one can use to overcome. Right. Um, and it, it is it's very much about how we lead. Right. And the adjustments we have to make to lead, and how to build trust. Mostly how to build trust. What is trust? How to build a trust? And trust is all part of respect for people. Yeah. 
Yeah. So. But, and 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 then and then engaging people in being able to actually s solve problems. And also yeah. set define what the standards are so that actually they either are getting back to a standard or they're taking they're taking the work beyond that standard to a new higher level of uh, of, of something i suppose yeah we, we we have to call on their potential yeah and we have to believe in their potential and make them believe in their own potential to do this because often especially on front lines they've never been asked to do it before so there's a lot of confidence building that has to go into it and and just basic belief. I believe you can do this. This is what we have to do. I believe you can do it. So yeah. it's about how to do It's going to be a lot about how to develop that in people. Yeah. And, well, and, and the psychological safety around it as well. Yeah. And it's calling it out. Calling those, you know, they have the potential. They haven't been using it. Calling it out. And um, that's respect for people. That's the Toyota way of respect for people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you're going to do a learning session at the summit. Yeah. Um, so, what areas are you going to cover? Just, just briefly. I think we are going to look at adding value. Right. What is adding value? How do we add value? What do we add value to? Problem identification, and the types of kaizen activities. Right. Practical ways to find inspiration. Because yep. there's practical things you can do to find inspiration and give others inspiration. Prototyping is very much for me being a part of finding solutions to problems and tooling for problems. Yeah. So yep. I've got a do's and a don't. Yeah. Because I've I've failed quite a lot at it as well as being successful at it and the failures have shown me what I shouldn't have done. So I'd like to share a little bit about that. And yeah. then just basically going through the PDCA, because that's all we're doing. We're going through the PDCA again. There's, you know, it's all interlinked. So it will basically be adding the value, understanding the roof of the house, the problem identification, types of Kaizen activities, practical ways to find inspiration, prototypes, do's and don'ts, building them, and just linking it all together, the PDCA, especially the CA. Yeah, 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 yeah. not just PD, PD. Yes, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so that, that's, I mean, I think that'll be, that'll be great, won't it? Um, you know, this, one of the things that always struck me about going to Mound was the, amount of practical things that people were doing and also the way in which things were made that they were fun the the things like on the wash bay the cars in the in the timing lane um it's just fun you know when you see all of those car you know when they got behind and you saw cars stacked up because actually they hadn't had the cars received from um from the from the workshop um it just made it very very simple really uh, and and i think that's that's maybe one of the what i mean we talked about this didn't we when we were prepping for this for, for the for this session it it's actually quite it, it's it it's quite difficult to make things simple it's harder to make things simple than it is to make things complicated often but when people see just how simple some of the countermeasures are, they kind of go, oh, why didn't I ever think of that? You know, yeah. and, that, and yeah. that, that thing with the cars where they all stack up is just a great visual, isn't it, really? And things like the post box. Yes, you know, the post for, box. For, 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 the, for the routes and things like that. And, and little brushes so that you could see whether or not there was something in the post box or not. And, you know, just very, very, very simple. They, yeah, they're very, very simple. I, I was actually, I was at Toyota last Monday. And we're, one of the things we, we're we doing on Thursday, on the Thursday of the summit week is we've organised 
to have a day, well, it's a, it's a five hours or so, um, where basically people talk about where you'll be able to visit Toyota and, and it's a bespoke thing for the summit delegates where what they're doing is they're talking about Kaizen and how yeah. they engage people with the with the process and you know not just the point kaizen but also the system kaizen and the and the flow kaizen that um, that, that they do and the guys were taking me around and we were trying to work out how to how to make it interesting for people basically yeah. you know what could mm-hmm. they what what could they show and and how could they how could they frame it and there were some absolutely brilliant examples all come up by the members doing the work you know yeah. of the Kaiser. and um, one of the things that they've been trying to do is to um, eliminate the need to use um, energy so yeah. you know powered conveyors so instead of having powered conveyors using gravity uh, yeah. like that and they, they call it uh, Karakuri Kaizen so so it's using using its own motion basically to yeah to move mm-hmm. things and two or three of the examples that showed were just uh, they were actually genius in how simple they were and one of the one of them was um they have a lot of these boxes by the line with parts in them and yeah. when when the box is empty you've got to get rid of the box you've got to put the box somewhere you know Absolutely. and so in a lot of a lot of factories you go into there is a, the operator has to take the box from the gravity and then put it down a chute and then it goes down a chute and then somebody collects it, takes it away, replenishes it and so on. And actually what they'd done is they'd just put stops where when the item was in, was in the, was in the, the, um, the racking, mm. the, the whole box stayed where it was. As soon as the last item was taken out, it automatically just moved down and then flowed down the rack to. Yeah. To really, si- so simple, and yet I must have been loads of those places and never seen anything that was so elegant. It really was. It was so elegant in it in its simplicity. And of course, when you multiply that through, and you say, well, you know a lot of people would say well so what and actually they were able to say well that, well that that saves x number of seconds and it's been re- replicated on y number of places which is actually saved z amount of time yeah you know which is all part of the productivity piece and actually didn't take any more energy or or anything anything like that so um, anyway yeah so yeah so the, i mean there's there's lo- there's lots for everybody to learn about about that type that type of type of stuff so, so why should why should people come to the session what what are they going to get out of it sharon um i think that they're going to maybe get a fresh point of view um because it's from a different environment and yep. I think it'll be fresh and I want to make it fun and easy to understand. And hopefully they'll go home thinking, I can do this. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um, that's what I really want. I just want it to be fresh and easy. Um, lots of it's, communication. It's cool. Yeah. Get, inspiring people to actually do something yeah. Yeah. Sli- in a slightly different way or with a different lens. That's yeah. right. Cool. Cool. Right. Okay. So um, the other thing is, well, I I was involved in you doing this. You wrote a book about the journey at Ngami Halfway Toyota, didn't you? What what was the reason for doing that? And what will people get from from reading it? Well, I wanted to record a unique journey that changed my life and the way I see work and the people doing the work. It changed my my viewpoint entirely. And I just wanted to share the joy with everyone and the hope that if they understand what a joyful experience it can be, they'll want to do it themselves. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. Because it was a joyful experience, Dave. 
<laughs> all, all the time? <laughs> there were some times in the beginning when there was difficulties with me understanding it more than anybody else. But to, towards when we started to implement, the very first time, like we did the flow on the front of the vehicles coming, coming in and being checked in by the service advisors, that was a huge day for in my life. And everybody was just so stoked after that day to do lean when they could get the vehicles going through every four minutes, get everything done, doing it every 20 minutes to every four minutes. It it really, really made everybody feel very satisfied with their day. Yeah. 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 I, well, there, there is something human, isn't there, about working out what you need to do yeah and then experimenting to do it and the accomplishment then of you know in that case meeting the tap time you know that's what you need to be able to do and you set you set a clear objective and then doing it and uh, and uh, and yeah so so yeah that's yeah interesting yeah and you know for me dave that was done with some with very well educated people, but a lot of them were really not well educated and, and the confidence it built in them as people is is an enormous reward to see them change and blossom and be so dedicated to it. Yeah. Yeah, because because the 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 purpose for them was clear in terms of what they got to do. Yes. So um yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to to to, to cover? Um, um, I just wanted to part of what I'll be talking about both in the plenary and in in the the actual workshop is leadership and what it what we need to have to be a leader. Okay. And, I'd really like to focus on understanding consistency as a leader and that nobody's um, by no matter of means a brilliant person, um, but I am consistent and persistent. And lean requires one to be consistent every day the same, believing in it, promoting in it, promoting it and supporting it. Right. So that will be part of my conversations. Questions as well. Okay, great. What questions right. do people have? So we've we've got a few participants online. Uh, nobody put anything in the meeting chat. So um, this is the opportunity. If if somebody wants to open their mic and ask a question, they're more than more than welcome to do so. So what what questions do you have? Yeah. Hi, David. It's Neil Triveder here. Hi, Neil. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question, really. People talk about um, continuous improvement as small daily improvements. Um, and, uh, you know, Rother talks about Kata in that way. Um, and he's very much, um, you know, his view is very much against sort of the project based approach uh, of implementing, uh, implementing um, improvements. Uh, and some people think that Kaizen is like that as well. You know, people think of Kaizen as a kind of a four or five day event. What, what's your view on that? Uh, well, my my view is that um, there are two main types. The, the, there's, there's the systemic stuff, and then there's the point stuff. And um, and actually, that's that's what we're going to go and see at Toyota on the Thursday. Uh, and actually, they're going to talk about that. I think Sharon's going to talk about it as well. So so some some stuff needs to be very much linked to strategy and breakthroughs that you're going to do. And that's really senior management's role to do those types of things. Then the other side of it is engaging everybody at their level to solve problems, to improve, to do the work and improve the work. And, and so that's very much this this um, this idea of of uh, of of point kaizen i think and um and i think i think the 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 kata stuff is initially really 
um, focused a lot more at the point activity because the cat of questions are driven towards towards that. But I'm sure Mike Rother would argue that by doing that at the point level, you practice and therefore as you practice, you're able to expand into more management-y type, t- type stuff. Um, my own feeling is that I'm not so sure, you know, I don't see Toyota using those questions in exactly that robotic way. Um, and, and, but, but I think it's, I think it's, it's probably useful in some situations and some circumstances as, as a lot of these things are, you know, very much in the situation. Um, so I don't know whether that, that helps you with the with the question, Neil, but it's a good question. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're saying really, David, is that you're splitting up improvement into kind of two streams and um, the big ticket items from the strategy and then yeah. the small daily improvements. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, and I, I'm very similar to this type of stuff that you did with GKN with Peter and Dave. Um you know those breakthrough things the systemic things with everybody focused on their own improvements and and you know you, you've got to have a you've got to have a purpose haven't you that yeah. you, know, you link the improvements to to a purpose basically i think um okay so i've got one others what one other from uh, from krish how would you encourage organizations to implement kaizen uh, well We'll, we'll we'll come back to that. I'm just conscious of the time because we've only got two minutes two minutes left. We'll come back to it. Um, but that is the kind of thing that we're going to do at the summit. Is we're going to talk about those kind of things, and we're gonna we're gonna have a whole load of people attending these things. Most people are trying to do this, or they're just they might be new into it, or they've been doing it. So so there's lots of opportunity for them to um, to, to, to 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 do, to do that. For those of you that are interested. Um, there are some masterclass sessions. So Neil, really, you know, this how do you build the lean management system is alluding to that piece around the systemic stuff and the daily stuff and actually the separation out of performance management from improvement management. So that, that that's the third one down there. But um, there are three um, sessions. We've got four running on Monday the 17th. The first three are run morning and afternoon the fourth one the culture one that darren's doing is just an afternoon uh, only these are highly interactive um with lots of discussion um from people who are pretty pretty long in the tooth and have been doing this a long time so um uh, another word for that would be experienced so uh, bring along your questions to to, to those um, and we talked a little bit about this as well um if it's got you thinking that some would be useful for you. There's a bit more information. Um, Monday 17th, as I said, is pre-summit masterclasses. And then Tuesday and Wednesday for the summit days. The event's being held in Liverpool in the UK. On Thursday, we have a half-day session to the D-side engine plant. That's Toyota's engine plant. The idea is to build upon uh, the keynote, the stuff that Sharon's going to be talking about, uh, these learning sessions on how to develop Kaizen spirit. And it's a bespoke thing that we've designed, uh, that they've designed for us. Uh, and of course, uh, we've built in the benefits relating to solving key problems, productivity improvement, and the environment as, we, as we've as we talked about with, uh, earlier. And in, ter- in Toyota's case, this Kuri Kaizen uh, piece. Um, you might also be interested in uh, our online platform. We've got a range of materials. Um, there's some uh, paid courses, there's on-demand webinars, uh, and and so on and so forth. So um, you, you can take a look at that. Uh, there's about 20 um, individual courses that are all now online that give people a good understanding of some of the key elements of, uh, of of doing lean we're adding more materials each month and being not for profit we're trying to use the revenue from the platform actually to make lean more accessible to everyone so that everybody can learn um for themselves how to create and deliver better value um better faster and cheaper uh, whatever industry you're in um 
if your company pays for it and the VAT registered, it's basically a hundred quid. So um, it's ninety nine pound ninety nine or something um, per year for an individual subscription. We've got lots of companies where lots of people are on the thing, and if you have a look at it and then think that that's that will be useful, uh, just drop us a line because we 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 are doing discounts on uh, for for groups. Um, and we, like I said, we've got a number of people on there. So just drop us a line at info at and we'll be able to uh, to explain that. Uh, okay, so last advert. Um, next Thursday, our webinar topic is how to develop learning processes. And that's with um, Dan Jones. Um, that's me and Dan doing that uh, without Luke um, moving the slides for us. So, so that I need to practice that a bit. So um, I hope you found the webinar of interest. Um, we'll we'll stay on uh, for a bit longer. We'll have a chat about some of these things that are coming through from from Matthew and from Ian, um, and um, you know keep putting the stuff in the chat or or on on open mic if you uh, if you want to stick your hand up and um, and, and and ask away. So I hope, I hope you've found it useful. So Matt, you, Matthew, you, uh, would the change management process of the company be a factor in implementing Kaizen on the go? Um, yeah, I think that's what what you were saying, Sharon. Really, isn't it? it is yeah. is there's a social side to this, and there's a technical side to the change. And, yeah. Uh, and so you, you're going to in your um sessions you're going to talk about that process that you that you went through what you learned from 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 doing it so i think yeah. that's right isn't it that's correct um if we don't get that bit right it's really hard to get anything else right yeah uh, and then Ian's asked a question, uh, would Kaizen be a first step to identify continuous improvement opportunities, i.e. during a Gemba, before driving a continuous improvement culture via CATA, or would Kaizen still be used to identify continuous improvements within CATA? Hmm. I, I'm going to be really quite... Um, What, what 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 do we call it? Um, uh, on the edge here. I, I I've never used Kata, so so I, I I don't think it's necessary. And and my own feeling with it is that it's overcomplicating what what you need to do. Um. So um. But that's just a you know just in the situations that I've worked in, I, I haven't felt the need to. Um, I haven't felt that it would actually help. So, um, so, so, so I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, whether that whether that would ha help Ian really. Um, so, uh, but 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 actually, um, in terms of the in terms of answering the question a bit more um, a bit more fully, um, I think there's there's lots of times when you can when you can um uh trigger doing kaizen there's that you know there's there's problem solving for getting back to standard but actually when you when you're achieving your thing that you need to achieve you know kaizen really is taking stuff to another level and without having the standards in place you actually can't do a lot of kaizen all you're really doing is Try to get some some kind of stability. So um, so 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 I think you know if you if you think about this, you know if if you think about that whole continuous improvement uh, culture bit, um, you really need to think about gaps from standards, but also the next you know if you can achieve the standard, what's what's the next level of improvement? I don't know whether you want to add anything, Sharon, to, to that. Uh, I mean, when I when I think back on our journey, we had our where we were changing an entire process when you and, and Terry came. That was one part of it. But the Kaizen actually happened when we had a problem to solve because 
we had either we had a customer complaint and they made us go and look at the work. So I think Kaizen can only really happen and is motivated by looking at the work itself. Because when you're looking at the work, you pick up the little things that can be improved on, and that's your Kaizen. Some yeah. of them little things, and some they 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 gigantic monster things that you you see there. Um, but it's only actually by going to the work, looking at the work, that you can really do Kaizen that makes a big difference. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that that's absolutely right, and and actually. You know, if you if we think about the, uh, you know, John Shuck's Lean Transformation Framework, this whole thing around what's the problem you try to solve, and then actually what's the work to be done to solve the problem, that triggers this whole piece around stuff like, you know, the level at which you're doing the work, whether or not you're trying to actually create a flow. Lots of people talk about doing Lean, and then when you actually go and look, they haven't got any flow and you kind of think well uh, you know where's where's the lean in all of this really um because you're not you're not really getting getting the value added to to to, to flow so um yeah yeah okay yeah I, yeah I think if if one looks at it it's actually if you go and look at the work and observe the worker talk to the worker then you find the right place to improve. Yeah. Visit our website, www.leanuk.org, or contact us at info at leanuk.org for any other information or how we can support you on your lean learning journey. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.